Adam Kirby wins the Epson Derby. Mad Morrigan here for Cold Bear Sports. Right. What a day for Adam Kirby. What a week. The roller coaster track. A roller coaster of emotions all week. Absolutely ups and downs. Losing the ride on John Leeper to then get in on RDR at the final hour. And uh, take down the classic. So really, really great story. And uh, what a jockey. Tactical genius. Cool as a breeze. And spy the gap on the rail. And the rest is history. So really, really good. Mojo Star for Richard Hannon. Pitched in at the deep end after two decent runs. And uh, David Egan having a really good day. A double on the cards as well. But anyway... Third realm or selection in the fifth, but ran a lot better than people think. Uh, just was a little slow away, and may, you just feel he was, couldn't hold his position. He was rushed to try and hold the position, and the gap just closed on third realm. And from there, he kind of had an uphill task. But he's def he will prove to be a very, very good horse, and I look forward to where he turns up next. I just think today, maybe Andrea just when he couldn't get the posse he wanted it he was always going to have an up uh, hill task but definitely still ran well in fifth but anyway he's wanting to follow max sweeney back and forth and ball shy ballet i warned you about the form of the durrenstown it wasn't worth much there was just nothing to it no substance everybody gets carried away because he wins easy but you always have to look at What's behind the horses? The horse that finished second in that race got beaten. The car I was sight the other day. Max Sweeney came back with a problem. And uh, Taipan Mulish as heck. He's a horse that just doesn't want to race. And there's there's a couple of other horses in behind. They were just the farm just amounted to nothing. And 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 that was there for anybody to see. So I warned you not to be going in on that horse at them crazy short prices. Right. We got the winner today, advised last night at 4 to 1, so it was great. A lot of people texting me that were on at 4 to 1, 100 to 30, 3 to 1, goes off 6 to 4 and romps home on the bridle. And then only spoofing, advised each way at 12 to 1 last night, so nice to get a nice few quid return on the each way. Yes, our Condu Spirit getting, our Condu Ishmael. Finishing second at Doncaster. A pity he couldn't win. It would have been a great day if he could have won for us. But anyway, that's the way it goes. Right, let's move on so till tomorrow. And let's have a look at a couple of selections in Ireland. And then we'll go to the pre the Jockey Club in Chantilly, the 3 o'clock. So let's touch on that first. Van Gogh, 7-1. Colin Keane going over to ride this horse. Now, I think Colin can get a good tune out of this horse. Stepping up to a mile and a quarter. One of the guys behind the scenes has been waiting for this horse to step up. Colin Keane in the saddle. And, yeah, he's the money man's tip. The money man, Fang off one pint each way in the three o'clock tomorrow. He thinks being by American Pharaoh, he's crying out for the step up. And he's going to give an improved performance tomorrow. Let's hope it's good enough. Looks a tough enough race. Lots of horses have coming in here with really, really good form. But anyway, as always, no classics are easy to win. Right, let's leave that there. And then let's focus on Kilbeg. In the 150, it's a boys race or an opportunity race, as they call it in Ireland here. Mike O'Connor in the saddle, riding for none other than Henry de Bromhead, having a great time of it always oh, this year, last year, every year. Henry de Bromhead just seems to train winners. This is a bumper mare with some really, really nice form. And uh, she goes over hurdles tomorrow. Cotty, or Cotty, one point win. I think she's around the 11 to 4 mark. And I think moving to Henry de Bromhead's Taff, I think it was Pat Taff used to train, and or Tom Taff used to train. So really, really interesting mare tomorrow. Around Kilbegan, uh, Henry de Bromhead has lots of winners in the last few days. So stable on fire. Let's hope she can kick it off in the 150 with a winner for us tomorrow. Then, interesting enough, in the 3 o'clock at Kilbegan and the 3.35, Keith Donahue has a couple of rides that might just step up on what they've done. So let's touch on the one in the 3 o'clock, the Leclaimer, trained by the Drapers. And this horse, definitely around the 13-2 to two mark, 
has ran okay. He was nudged up two pound for a decent enough run the last time, but I still think he can improve a little bit again. But he will have to. So we'll give it a one point each way. The declaimer Jaxi in the saddle, and then in the three thirty five, this one trained by Sneezy Foster Aliam. I think the step up and trip will suit. Uh, not sure it suits on pedigree, but just on run style it might suit. Three thirty five Kilbegan, one point each way around the seven to one. So. Maybe it might be worth doing a little uh, each way double with the two of them if you like. A one point each way double. The Declaimer and Aliam. Keith Donahill's two rides there tomorrow and Jaxi having a very, very good time with things as well lately. And uh, yeah, definitely interesting. But anyway, the money man, Van Gogh for him in the pre the jockey club. And uh, let's hope he's 7-1, to one, a big price for a horse with a really, really nice run in the Irish Guinea, staying on the whole time. And uh, yeah, Cotty in the 150 in the boys race at Kilbegan tomorrow. Young Mike O'Connor getting £4 off for the Bromhead camp. All right, the time for Cotton is over.